Can you check them mm -hmm. up? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you near. We'll send you out. Um. Is that it? Yeah. 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 Hard to know, isn't it? This is my great grand grandfather. This is my my granddad. Did you know him? Yeah, yeah I did. He was very nice to me, my grandfather. Tom Warne was born in 1870. He was a Carlton cricket player for 26 years who captained Victoria and also represented Australia on one occasion. But the football and cricket players in Carlton were having some troubles. After each season, the Melbourne City Council allowed cattle to graze on the playing field, ruining it. When the club finally was granted new land, the designated area was a rubbish tip on top of an old quarry. Tom was a cabinet maker by trade, but he loved cricket and decided to take on the challenge to turn the dump into an oval. When the cricket grounds were finished, just before the turn of the century, Tom became the curator and him and his wife Alice moved into a small curator's cottage next to the grounds. I'd rather right, say so it is because um, there's a lot of the council paper is to live in, not in these. There's so, nowhere else that I can think of in this in no. like Princess Park, this is the only one. Alice and Tom had 12 children and the five sons all followed in the father's footsteps and played cricket for Carlton. One of them, Frank, ended up later playing for England and South Africa and in India he played three seasons for the cricket mad Maharaja Bupinda Singh, whose team Patiala 11 was among the best in the country. Look how sharp he's looking. I know he is. I know he is. Look at that. With his hat. He's gorgeous. That's right. That was my father's name. Bert Warren? Yes. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, that was my father's name. In 1923, another of Tom's sons, Herbert Colin Joseph, who was then 14, became his father's assistant. And when Tom retired after 50 years of service, Bert took over as the curator of the Carlton Grounds. Me and Mum. Show me. Me and Mum. Me and Mum. Me. George, my mum. No, pretty bad. You look out and mum, can you? In 1938, Bert married Dorothea Agnes Matilda O'Neill, called Peg, of South Melbourne, and on June 18, 1941, Ida, Kristen Mary Alice, was born in Richmond. The family, being the keepers of the grounds, now lived in the old curator's cottage, and while Bert spent two years serving with the Australian Imperial Force, Princess Park became Ida's playground. I wish I could have a look. Yeah, come and have a look. Have a look. Have a look. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember it, Dada? Yeah, I remember it now. You lived here with your mum and dad? Yeah. It's a good place to grow up. Right by the park. I, I used to go and um, watch the football playing yeah. up over there. Yeah. Mum, Dad used to take me from here over to there. To watch the footy? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, Thanks very much. No problem. No problem. See you, Paul. See you later. Come here, some memories? My name's Ida. Oh, Tyrone. What's your name? Tyrone. Bert's job meant working broken hours seven days a week, but he must have done a good job. The wicket was reportedly the best kept in the country. A letter from the president of the Victorian Football League dated in October 1945 reads, Dear Mr. Warren, the president and members of the Victorian Football League desire to express their thanks and appreciation for the excellent manner in which you prepare the arena and ground appointments for the 1945 final matches. 
We are most grateful and ask your acceptance of the enclosed cheque for five pounds as a small present with our best wishes. Oh, we are grand. In 1954, Queen Elizabeth II and her husband Prince Philip toured Australia. On March 4, Ida was among a large crowd of Melbourne children standing when the royal car drew up. The Minister of Health greeted the Duke, but before any introductions could be made, a girl rushed forward. The next day, the newspapers reported, skipping past the policewoman and officials, an eight-year-old girl broke away from the crowd to greet the Duke. Here is a picture of the girl, Ida Warren of Carlton, as she danced up to the Duke, clapping her hands. Is that your dad's dog? Yeah. Bert owned a few greyhounds and Ida remembers going with him to watch the races. In 1970, Bert retired and the family moved to Inglewood outside Bendigo where they lived near a family friend, Phyllis Cox. Ida had known Auntie Phil since she was a child and when Bert passed away in 1972, it seems that Ida went to live with her for a couple of years. There's me mum. There's me mum. Ah, oh, she's a beauty, isn't she? Yeah, she was when she was sick. Oh, she just she just passed passed away. Yeah, she was gone. She was dead. It was 1977 when Peg passed away as well, and Ida moved to an institution run by the Salvation Army called the Haven. There she met Susanna Munro, who worked at the institution. And when the Haven closed down, Ida and Susie both moved to Cast. <laughs> oh, I used to say, oh, you've got to get the staff to give one to you. Every now and again, I. Oh, she couldn't sit down. She, um, you got, um, oh, that's very nice, Ida. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's a long time ago. So this is me here. In the corner with the curly hair for the perm. It must have been in the 80s. Do you think? Yeah, with a bang, maybe. Oh, look at you. Look at you <laughs> look there. Look at who's that, Lizzie? Yeah, look, yeah, look nice there. Who's that? So poor this was Judy. all of us that went to Fiji? Yeah, poor Judy. Judy. I'm missing her. Yeah, she was great, wasn't she? There we are in all our bathers. <laughs> oh, look at us go. Didn't we have fun? <laughs> Judy, good Judy. I know, she loved the donkeys, didn't she? And we had such a ball. I've got to say, we had the best time, didn't we? Long time ago now, but it was a huge holiday. And um, we did absolutely everything. We went on these canoes up to these remote little huts, didn't we? Remote villages. Oh, no, yeah. Remember where these people put on a big feast for us? I no, remember yeah. that. And we had to try and sing songs with them and they gave us their special kava juice or something which made your tongue go all, um, make you, sort of froze your tongue, sort of made your tongue go all, it was very different but we had fun and then we went dancing half the night, didn't we Ash? Oh, I'm very happy did too. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yes, <laughs> and look at this, that was... The three of them used to sort of do a lot of things together. It's a bit of a team. She's gorgeous. I love Judy O'Neill. Me too. She was gorgeous. Oh, look at Judy. Look at Judy. Isn't she lovely there? The gorgeous girl, Judy. Me. Wow, look at that. Ida has never been one to turn down anything at the prospect of a good time. 
and so she has enjoyed a rich and varied life. But a lifelong interest of hers has been art and craft. Um, oh, I think probably about 19 years or so I've known Ida and um, it's probably been the last, um, you know, 10 or 12 years that uh, Ida's uh, been joining the studio program and now she's uh, just about with us every day in the studio because she really enjoys coming in here um, and she does uh, a lot of different uh, things she's interested in uh, textiles, sewing, clay work, um, drawing, painting. Um, but I think she really enjoys the social thing, and I really love it when she comes in here because she's perhaps one of the most enthusiastic people <laughs> you could meet in the studio. And uh, she'll give every and anything a go, which is really nice. Hey, hey, in here, my cousin, and then a bit more finished. <laughs> but I think the thing I love the most about it is that for someone who's 71, you know, she's just fantastic. She's, you know, so energised, and yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I just think she's amazing, <laughs> truly. Thank you. Good luck. Hope you come back some time. I will.